I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are Velocities in Music, VIMTV, here today to review an album that came out in 1997 by a music god by the name of David Bowie. Um, his 1997 album is entitled Earthling, and it is the album in which David Bowie experimented with techno. Um, and, and, and even, it's been, it's been categorized as techno and, and jungle. I get a lot, you know, I know jungle and industrial are kind of similar. Mm -hmm. um, I get a ton of industrial, and I, I hear Nine Inch Nails sometimes mm -hmm. when I listen well, to Well, and Trent Reznor actually did, like, a remix and worked right. with them on I'm Afraid of America. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, and to tell you the truth, like, um, critics were really split on this album. Like, some mm -hmm. critics got it and said it was just genius. And, um, and, and a lot of critics, um, like, including All Music, which I think is a very reputable um, written review music site for for any any I mean they do everything and, mm -hmm. and they do it well um, I think um, so but I know all music gave this like a 50 and out of a hundred and, and I think that that is just way too low for this album mm -hmm. I mean I think people and this is one thing I'm gonna rant on really quick and then we'll get into the actually talking about the music of Earthling um, is that Music critics, and I think a lot of the times, I mean, something that we've always tried to abstain from on VIMTV.com is, is, is that we just, I feel like you cannot compare an album to an artist's previous work. It just doesn't do that album justice because that, that, that is saying if you were doing that and you loved something like, say, David Bowie, for instance, this guy is a visionary in music. Music has been changed by this man forever. And, and so many artists have been influenced by, by albums like Hunky Dory and The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and even albums like Earthling. Um, you know, that, that how, how can you question that? But I think what happens is music critics develop their opinions on music based off of those classic albums. So when these visionary, experimental artists change styles, because they're not going to do the same thing over time. If Paul McCartney would have done the same thing over and over and over again, he would have been looked at as a joke, because the album is like, it, it, just, it dilutes the quality of your work. And, and you want to see artists experiment with their sound and change what they're doing. And it's just all about how they embrace it. Can they do it well? Can they do it effectively? And I don't think that, that, you know, all the reviews that I've read about Earthling, that, you know, obviously this came back in 97, so these reviews are 14 years old, um, you know, they, they never really did, they don't do it justice. They don't give this album the, the, the deserved, you know, critique that it really deserves, because it, it's... It's a whole different beast. It really yeah. is. Um, and you cannot compare it to Bowie's previous albums because it's not meant to be com compared to those previous albums. Um, and, and so that's just a little beef that I have. We try to look at an, at an album and look at it just for its singular nature. Now, this is a request. Um, this uh, was a written request. We do written requests at VIMTV. If you write us, uh, essentially, um, this was requested by a guy named Alex B. Alex, thank you for the request. This is, episode is uh, dedicated to you. Um, and Alex wrote us a fantastic, pretty much an essay on why we, we uh, should review Earthling. And he did a great job of explaining why he liked it, um, what, what he thinks that this album did for music in general, gave us some back history, and, and, wanted, and, want, and told us why he was interested in hearing our opinions on it. And because it was so well written, we honored his request, and we're reviewing it today. Um, before I go any further, I want to turn it over to Tom and let Tom just kind of talk to you about all the really cool things that he experienced in listening to this album, because as a music producer yourself, I mean, there's a lot of insight that you have. It's like candy, mm -hmm. the production on this album. And the first thing that happened when I hit play on Little Wonder track one is I thought, did, did I accidentally go to the Prodigy or something? <laughs> Which is interesting because Prodigy's album, Fat of the Land, came out the same year right. as this album. And I, I got that album right when it came out and I loved it growing up. Mm -hmm. um, now obviously Bowie takes it in a different direction, as he does with everything that he makes. Right. Um, I mean, it's classic Bowie vocals put on this really rambunctious, moving, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, like acid trip mm -hmm. of beats. Right. Um, and, and, but really what I love is the intensity in these arrangements. Um, and, and just how, I mean, he can just belt it sometimes, because, you know, you think about his early kind of pop kind of glam stuff, and he goes to this, and you, you put on, like, seven years in Tibet, mm -hmm. and it's just a powerhouse! It just punches you right in the face, and I loved that. And so I love, uh, thank you, Alex, for making me listen to this album mm -hmm. that otherwise probably it would have taken me a while to get to in the Bowie discography because it's not, you know... It's not the prominent album. No, it's not one of his know. most popular ones, but I still really enjoyed it yeah. and I was surprised at that. Now, um, Jake and I had 
pretty much the exact same gripes about this, mm -hmm. which were just a couple. Um, and one of those is that the beats get a little predictable. Um, they, they get, you know, I mean, they, they end up sounding kind of the same once you get through these nine tracks. Mm -hmm. Now, where that is made up for, for me, uh, is in Bowie's vocals. Right. Because Bowie knows how to write a catchy, memorable vocal melody. So while when I'm listening to this album, the beats get a little repetitive, get maybe a, a little monotonous, well, mm -hmm. I mean, hardly monotonous within themselves because they're so crazy, but right. I mean relative to each other. Right. Um, while they, they get a little repetitive, uh, that's not what I remember. Mm -hmm. What I remember from these is, is how powerful and moving these songs are in the vocal melodies and the production. You're right, and, and even, even, you know, the composition of the songs, you know, I'm thinking, this came out in 97, and I'm thinking of, you know, if you, those of you who have ever produced music before, and in the programs, you know, you see the different track layers, and it, like, this had to be one of the most difficult projects to put together. Especially uh, since knowing Bowie, and he's old school, I mean, I'm guessing they probably did a lot of this analog still. Yeah, um, one, one interesting tidbit is, uh, in 1997, they played a, 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 a show, and it was a, kind of a secret, but they, um, uh, went under the, under the moniker, the Dow Jones Index. Oh, uh, I, I read that, yeah. Uh, Dow spelled T-A-O, um, so, and, yeah. uh, which I think is hilarious because I'm a finance guy. <laughs> um, but, uh, it, it does, you know, Jones being David Bowie's, um, at his, his surname, which, you know, he obviously took David Bowie as a, a stage name. Um, I, my, my point is, is that this album was definitely a different direction for Bowie, and because mm -hmm. of that, it's so, it's so interesting to hear him uh, and do this, and, and mix genres together, too, because while this is techno, like I said before, there's a lot of industrial. When these guitars come in, it is just powerful mm -hmm. and, and 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 i i gotta say i mean we're two big industrial heads here i love that um anytime that there is just that industrial guitar I, I thought that was a super uh highlight of it but um you know i thought that one of the things that i really enjoyed about this album is that it has this intense mood to it but the album also flows very well it's only nine tracks um, with with some remixes tagged on that we don't consider part of the album, but the nine tracks that are th that make up Earthling flow very well from start to finish. You can put this on and listen to the whole thing, and I don't think that there's any skippable tracks. I think these are all very high quality, mm -hmm. high quality tracks, and it even gets a little dark at the end, which I like when albums can can provide um, some some contrast. And I think that that just does it really uh, that this David Bowie did a great job of accomplishing exactly what he wanted. I think that maybe he just did it too well almost. He almost mm -hmm. put too much uh, emphasis on the rules of just embracing this that it almost kind of cut off some of that emotional depth that you were describing. Yeah, and it does kill some of the contrast because right. those beats are kind of going the whole right. time. But still, I think this is a really high quality album. I'm so excited uh, that I got to hear it. I'm going to go check out more of David Bowie's, you know, 90s work, because uh, that's when he was starting to really experiment with different sounds. I'm giving this an 81. I'm going to 82. Yeah, 80, 82 overall for VIMTV. That's right where this thing's at, in my opinion. Um, really high quality. Um, not not genius, not brilliant, but I'm so glad that this is one of those albums that was... I'm just so glad this was made, because it, it probably did influence music. Have you guys listened to Earthling? What are your thoughts on Earthling? And what is your favorite David Bowie album? Because whatever... There's a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, whatever one you guys say, I'm probably going to go uh, make sure I listen to it if I haven't heard it already. Leave us a comment at www.velocitiesinmusic.com and youtube.com slash velocitiesinmusic. Remember, you guys can always submit emails um, or, or uh, direct messages for requests, and the best royal written requests will get honored once every two weeks, um, and you can do that at vimtv.com and YouTube. Um, also, check out our, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter because that is where we communicate with music and check out uh, Ian's Tumblr blog at vimtv.tumblr.com. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV moving music critique forward.